Hello everyone. One of the biggest gaps in AI today is the memory. You can have a great conversation, but the next time when you return, it feels like you're starting from zero again. The AI forgets your details, your preferences, and the context which you have already given. And to make the assistants truly useful, they need more than just the intelligence. They should have the ability to remember. So in this video, I'll explain how we can add the memory to an AI application or the AI agents. Let's take an example of Azure AI Foundry agent, which are very powerful when it comes to handling the conversation. They can keep track of the dialogue using threads or the runs. Now, the context is preserved only for short duration, which means as long as you stay inside the same thread, the context is preserved. And the limitation is the moment you close the session or start a new thread or the session, all of that context is gone. Now, then you have to again start from zero. And by default, the agent doesn't have a long term memory that works fine for a simple or one time chat. But to make the agents or assistants that has better personal experience, we need something more. And that's where the memory zero comes in. Also called as mem zero. So but what is mem zero? So mem zero is short for memory zero. It's a memory framework designed to work with AI agents which gives them the ability to remember and reuse the information provided over the time. So now instead of storing each and every word which is provided during the conversation, it focuses on capturing only the key data or make them easy to recall later. So now how the memory zero works. So we are going to use the memory zero along with the Azure AI search. So imagine a user opens your application and start chatting with the agent. As they share the details, maybe about the preferences, their style, their goals, Memory Zero captures these pieces of information and stores them in the Azure AI search. Now, the information is stored under a specific user ID, so it never gets mixed up with someone else's information or the data. So in practice, Memory Zero plugs into a vector database. So in this case, we'll use the Azure AI search and uses the Azure OpenAI embedding model it can be different embedding model which are available to store and retrieve the information based on the meaning rather than just the exact words. So you can do a semantic search on it. Now, next time when the user comes back, even if they are starting a brand new thread, the agent doesn't have to begin from scratch. The app quietly just ask memory zero, what do we already know about the user? And the memory zero queries the AI search, pulls, the most relevant information or the details and feeds them into the agent before it responds. Now the user never sees this is happening in the back end, but what they experience is continuity. They feel more connected to it. So the idea of the persistent memory isn't just useful in one scenario. It applies almost everywhere. Think about the customer support assistants that remembers a user past issues and the different solutions which were provided. So they don't have to repeat themselves every time. Or another example or another use case is the learning companion that can track your progress, your, your skills, your goals to guide. So the students over the weeks and months, it can provide the relevant information based on what they have learned till now. Another use case is for wellness and the healthcare application where they can keep track of the routines and the conditions to provide the personalized experience or the recommendation. And if we'll talk about the e-commerce, an assistant that can remember your shopping preferences, your, your style choices, or the different order history, so that it can make a more relevant recommendation, which will feel more personal to you. So all of these examples highlight how a memory transform an a assistant into a long-term partner itself. So in this video, I want to show you a demo of a lab, which is based on a real world example, which is a cooking assistant. So imagine building a cooking assistant on the very first session, the agent asks onboarding questions. So what kind of diet you follow? Do you have any allergies? So as the user answers, the memory zero records each of these details and stores them in an Azure AI search. Next day or the later, when the user comes back and simply asks, okay, what can I cook for dinner? In that case, even though this is a new thread, the assistant doesn't have to start 
from scratch or another round of the questions. So behind the scene, Memory Zero will retrieve the user diet, allergies, favorite cuisines and all those information which are already provided. So those details will be passed to the agent and when the agent will respond, it will respond with all the information already available. And it's not just one time information. If the user changes something, for example, they have shifted to a new diet. So then the memory zero will update the memory. So it's not that always a new memory will be created. The memory can even be updated. So it feels more natural. It feels like an assistant knows about them and gives a personalized experience. And for you as a developer, the flow is very clean and simple. The agent handles the reasoning. Memory zero manages the memory. AI search stores the knowledge and the embedding makes it possible to search by the meaning using the semantic search instead of the keywords. So in this demo, I'll show you how this setup turns a simple cooking assistant into an intelligent personal helper that grows with you over the time. I am logged into Azure portal now and let's start with the creation of Azure AI Foundry. So go to Azure AI Foundry, create a new one. I'll create the new resource group. Rest everything will be default. It's running the validation now. And once the validation is done, I'll just create the hub and the project. Deployment is successful now. And let's go to resource, which is AI Foundry Hub. And let's open the Azure AI Foundry portal. So right now I'm into the project which we have created. Now we need three things. First is we need to create an agent and for an agent, we need to deploy an Azure OpenAI model, which will be GPT-40. Then we need to deploy an embedding model. And then we have to use the Azure AI search for the vector database. So let's start with the creation of agent. Let's go to the agents. And because we don't have any model deployed, so it will ask us to deploy the model. So here you go and we'll use GPT-40. I'll just increase the tokens and deploy. So once the model is deployed, it will automatically create a new agent also because that's how it works. And you can even test this agent into the playground. So this is the agent and the agent ID. So we don't have to test it. This is going to work. So now another thing which we want is go to the models and endpoints and it created GPT-40 model and we want another embedding model. So I'll be using the text embedding model small. So now we have these two things and afterwards we need Azure AI search. So let's look for AI search. And I have already created a search service. However, I'll just show you how you can create a new one. So just use provide any name and the region and you can choose which tier you want to use so i'll recommend the basic one and just create it nothing else you have to just create it empty ai search service which i have already created but there is memory in it i just want to show you how it works because i want to show you a demo so that's why if we'll go here there are there should be two indexes yes and one has some memory another one is for uh, saving the memory zero details Okay, so now I'll quickly show you the code which I have created for the demo and you can find this code in the description of this video also. So let's first provide the details. Now what we have to provide is Azure AI Foundry endpoint and the API key for the text embedding model. So let's provide this. So we have to just provide this much, not the whole. 
and the API key. Don't worry about the API key, I'll remove it. Now I have to provide the project endpoint. So if we'll go back, go to the overview, there is the project endpoint, Azure AI Foundry project endpoint. Let's copy this. Provide it here and the agent ID, the agent which we have created. So we are going to use the same agent, but the multiple threads in it. So let's go to the agent. You can rename it, but I just want an ID of it. And let's provide the agent ID. Now you have to provide the Azure AI search service name. This is the one which is already created. I'll quickly show you. This is the name of the service and if we'll go in the keys, there is an option of the admin key. You can copy the admin key from here, which I've already done and the endpoint from here URL. This is the endpoint. So now I've provided the name and the API key. So the endpoint is already taken care inside the code itself. So we have to just provide these details and this is the collection name AI search collection name, which we have to create. And this is the dimensions for the embedding model. So the maximum dimension is 1536 for the small one. However, for another one is 3072 something um, for the large. You can use that one also, but I've, I'm using this one. I'll use the same. So let's save this. Now let's quickly go through app.py. This is the Python application file. So this is basically the information which we use when we import an agent. This is for memory mem0. And before that, I'll quickly show you what are the different um, packages which you need to install the fast API, uvicon, dot environment. This is for dot env file, httpx, memory AI. So this is the one which we are installing. And then you have to just pip install hyphen r requirements.txt. This will install everything. So for me, it's already done, but for you, you have to install. So once this is installed, then we'll go to app.py. So this from mem, so from mem0, it's taking the memory and loading all the environment variables where all the environment variable which we have provided will come. Then it's initializing the project, it's making the connection and it's defining the memory configuration. So in memory configuration, it's defining the embedding model the vector store and all those details so that these will be used by memory zero. And then all the details about how the agent will act, what are the different skills it requires. And these are the different personas, cooking instructions, which are, which are defined. So you can go through this code and understand it. And there is server.py, which is fast API with so. I want, I don't want to show it in the terminal. So I wanted to show, create some application and that's the reason I've created some index file app.js as well as CSS file so that it can give you a better experience. A look and feel will be good. So all these files will be uploaded there. So let's run this. Okay. It's running on port 8000. Perfect. So now the application is running and what you have to do is to start it, just provide your name. For example, I'll use Anthony start. It takes a little bit of time because it's doing the memory search also. So, so far there is nothing. So it will start. What's your skill level? So I'll say beginner and it'll ask the smart questions based on the details and it will keep saving the memories also. But now, the important point is that all those memories which are saved will be for different users. So for N3, these memories are getting saved. So what's your favorite cook? What do you want to cook? So uh, all those details I can provide it and it'll keep saving all those details. Now I want to show you if there is another user, for example, my user start. So it will not start from scratch. It has all the memories already there. So let's ask this question. What do you know about me? I have set up an information that it provides all the details. So like uh, I want the recipes which uses air fryer and I'm an intermediate cook and loves chicken and the air fryer recipes. 
dietary preference is vegetarian and this is not how i provided it i provided in in a very short way or a, or a different way so now memory zero converts that information into a graph based information and converts into a form and then save it so that it's usable information and then it can just fetch it easily so if i'll just ask here um, i want a quick recipe for dinner so it should now based on all those details which i have already provided it will provide me a recipe or ask me another question okay do you want these details do you like this or not and let's see um the information so got it dislikes i don't like garlic so this will be saved in the memory also that i don't like garlic so it has saved profile dislikes is garlic with recipe oh my spelling is wrong but that's all right ai will understand it perfect so it has turmeric spiced air fryer cauliflower cauliflower bites so all the ingredients everything so now i have started another session again and you see it has all the preferences everything saved and that's how the memory zero can save update or retrieve the information so now to summarize this video azure ai foundry agents only keep the short term context within the threads and that's why we needed something extra memory zero adds the missing piece it creates a long term memory so azure ai search becomes the database that holds the memory which is vector database and azure open ai embeddings make it possible to retrieve the right information at the right time so putting it all together you get an ai that doesn't just chat it remembers and it provides a completely different user experience so that's all i wanted to show in this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much